I confess that I am one of those stupid old guys, yes, 60 plus, that thinks riding off-road is a good idea. I have no delusion that I am a great rider or that my aging bones are in the shape to sustain the rigors of off-road riding. But even so, it is still fun and challenging even at my advanced age. My goals and that of my riding partners are to ride as many of the backcountry discovery routes as possible. In fact, this August we are planning on tackling the bulk of the Northeast BDR, which is rated one of the hardest of the 10 backcountry discovery routes. To get in shape for this adventure, we decided to ride what is known as the Hamster Trail. This nearly 400 mile track runs the length of New Hampshire from south to north and is advertised as being big bike friendly. I downloaded the GPS tracks using version 8 as suggested in the ADV forums and divided it into three sections. The first running from Hollis, New Hampshire to Littleton, New Hampshire, a distance just under 200 miles, plus the 67 miles we needed to ride from my home near Foxborough, Massachusetts. I was riding my 2020 Yamaha WR250R while my companions were mounted on a 2018 Yamaha XT250, a 2020 Husqvarna 701LR, and a 2018 BMW GS1200. We met in Hollis and hit the road headed to Littleton for that evening. This first section turned out to be a very relaxing ride on mostly back roads or hard packed dirt. I would estimate that the route was approximately 60% dirt and 40% tarmac. Except for one short but rugged section, this was a very mild and enjoyable ride easily taken by large bikes or riders with limited off-road experience. For the evening, we stayed at the Hampton Inn in Littleton and walked to the Applebee's for dinner, which is situated right next door to the hotel. At this stop, we picked up another rider on a Yamaha Super Tenere who was riding the hamster on his own. Of course, we invited him to come along as we continued our journey northward. The following day, we started on Section 2, which ran from Littleton to Errol, New Hampshire, at the junction of Routes 16 and 26. At this location is the LL Coat Decor and Outlet Store, as well as an Irving Oil Station where you can get fuel. So this proved to be the perfect place for a break. The second section was a mixture of the same easy two-lane dirt roads we had encountered the previous day with a few more difficult sections thrown in. These rougher sections were found in an off-road vehicle area between Dummer and Errol, New Hampshire, where the track took us onto an OHRV off-highway recreational vehicle area. In our pre-trip research, everyone on the various forums we visited said the hamster trail was completely legal to ride. However, as we got into this OHRV section, we noticed signs that indicated trail bikes were not allowed. This is where things got a little bit confusing. In New Hampshire, a trail bike is defined as any motor-driven wheeled vehicle on which there is a saddle or seat for the operator and or passenger designed to travel off maintained roads. It seems obvious that our motorcycles meet the criteria of a trail bike. However, I and my companions were on dual sport or adventure bikes, so they were legally registered to ride on the street just as any car or truck. An OHRV is defined as any mechanically propelled vehicle used off a public way for recreational or pleasure purposes and dependent on the ground or other surface for travel. All legally registered motorized vehicles used off the highway for this purpose shall be defined as an OHRV. Being that our bikes are legally registered to ride on the street, it is also clear that they also meet the criteria as OHRVs. As we got deeper into this off-road area, we started to see more signs indicating that trail bikes were not allowed. But did this include us? 
Were our dual sport or adventure bikes defined as trail bikes or were we allowed as an OH RV? Well, I'll talk more about this a little bit later in this video. The trails were still ride, but they became sandier and rockier as we got deeper into the OHRV area. There was one rocky hill that required a bit more skill, and even though we made it up, three of us dropped our bikes along the way. No one was injured, and we just picked ourselves up and continued on. Having made our way through the second section to Arrow, we decided to continue north and again quickly ran into another OHRV area. These roads became steadily narrower, sandier, and ruddier. While not a real problem for the small bikes, the large bikes started to have some difficulty in the ruddy ground. Their rear tires getting caught in the trenches left by the ATVs. After traversing about 20 miles of this terrain, we ultimately decided to stop and turn around before things got too tight for the big bikes. The main issue was that we just did not know what was waiting for us up the road. We did not want to get into a situation where it would become increasingly more difficult to turn ourselves around. In addition, we ran across a couple piles of bear scat and thus thought reversing our course might be a good idea. By the time we turned the bikes to re-ride the 20 miles back to the main highway, the trail had turned into a two-track road with six-inch deep ruts on either side. Unfortunately, none of us thought to take pictures of this section as we were too busy getting the bikes turned around. While all of us would have liked to have completed the hamster trail, it was unanimous that reversing our track was a good idea as it turned out to be another 200 plus mile day to get back to our hotel in Littleton. There are not a lot of choices in the northern section of the route, so we decided to return to the Hampton Inn. Overall, riding the Hamster Trail was a great experience with a few challenges just to make it interesting. I highly recommend the lower section from Hollis to Littleton. It is a beautiful ride and as advertised, easy for big bikes and inexperienced riders. The northern sections, however, do require a bit more skill in a few places. The main problem with the northern section is that it is still unclear from reading the forum posts or watching YouTube videos if dual sport or adventure bikes are allowed on the trails. To answer this question, I reread the regulations and looked at the OHM off-highway motorcycle sections of the New Hampshire Off-Road Course Study Guide. In this guide, it defines OHMs as the following. A motocross bike. These motorcycles are designed for racing over jumps and are not legal for the street. Enduro bikes. These long distance competition motorcycles meet minimum standards to be street legal as well as environmental protection agency or EPA standards. A dual purpose, which would be our bikes are designed for paved road and off-road use. These motorcycles are fully street legal. They have lights, turn signals, and are approved for highway use. Their tires are approved by the Department of Transportation. They have spark arresters that are approved by the U.S. Forestry Service. And they have noise and emission controls, again, that conforms to the EPA standards. Adventure bikes are not specifically mentioned, however, I believe any dual sport motorcycle, regardless of size, would be considered a trail bike, and thus not allowed on many of the tracks included in the northern sections of the Hamster Trail. Again, I caution anyone wanting to tackle this ride not to rely on forum posts or YouTube videos, including this one. It is abundantly clear that most of the people making these posts have not truly ridden the northern sections. In their defense, many of these roads were closed due to a bridge being reconstructed. However, they are now open and thus we were able to travel deeper into those OHRV sections. In New Hampshire, you are required to register your bike as an OHRV. This must be done in person at one of several registration agents. I will list this in my blog article on my website and in the description of this video. 
Non-residents can get a temporary permit to ride off-road at one of those agents and the fee is $41 for 10 days. Fines for getting caught riding in posted areas are $248, so it can get expensive. Do not believe me or the forum posters. Call the New Hampshire Fish and Game at 603-271-3127 before you decide to ride the hamster trail and go into these off-road areas. All right, guys, that's it, ride safe.